needed a, an American actor on a Tuesday and it was Thursday and they saw the call sheet was coming up and they started looking through the files and they were like, this guy will be fine. They looked at the audition tape. This guy will be fine. Let him play Ellis McKenzie on a show called Alias El Mexicano. So I had three days to research Barry Seal. That's his alias was Ellis McKenzie. And then start filming. And uh, the director was less high on weird drugs the first night I started filming. So it was really cool. But then when he was a little bit more high on drugs, it got really crazy and difficult. So once, um, while I was filming the show, I got the idea to make a theater piece about all of this somehow. Um, and then the process starts when you start actually making the theater piece. And the more we researched the character, the real character, Barry Seal, the more I realized that just the story of this guy is so interesting, it needed to be dealt with somehow. But the simple version is he was a pilot, was the youngest pilot for TWA, but then started kind of doing weird little side jobs like smuggling arms down to Mexico for the mob that may have been meant for uh, anti-Castro forces, which may meant he had lingered with some of these Bay of Pigs people, who later became the Watergate people. And then he started smuggling marijuana. And in jail, met a guy who gave him a phone number for a contact with the Medellin cartel. And he made that contact and then started moving the drugs for uh, Jorge Ochoa who was the main boss where Pablo Escobar worked for him and they he made the main smuggling operation bringing all the drugs in the United States through Louisiana so of course this started to get some heat and then he got caught doing something and he had to turn informant and he really didn't want to go to jail so he turned informant and became a great informant for the drug administration drug enforcement administration the DEA um, but he was a he was quite large I'm not the best casting um, because I'm not that large and uh, very crazy, flamboyant, outgoing, southern guy from Louisiana. So in that sense, as a drug smuggler, he's a very unique character. It's not your typical kind of weird Vietnam pilot, you know, who's like laying low and, and hiding in the shadows. I mean, he was like out there, and he made a system where he couldn't get caught. The most interesting thing, especially about Barry Seal, is he kind of wasn't scared of anything. So he would um, need to call Pablo Escobar and record that call for the DEA, and he'd record it for himself. Uh, so what he would do is he'd go into the, the bedroom of a hotel and have a translator friend who worked for Pablo Escobar. Like, hey, you take the phone over here, man, in the, in the lounge. I'll go in the hotel, I'll go in the bedroom. He would put a suction cup and record the call, totally chill, while that other guy who's working for Escobar is in the other room on the phone. And you know, so he's like, he kind of didn't care. The whole thing was like a crazy adventure for him. Collaborators on this project are an amazing set designer from New Orleans named Jeff Becker. And a DJ who's originally from Philly named Mario Cotto. And what we're doing as a, a team is um, we went to New Orleans to develop the set and Jeff had built these fractured pieces of a Cadillac and we went to Baton Rouge to the Salvation Army where Bear Seal had to stay and where he was gunned down. And did research on like the parking lot, the position of the Cadillac, we talked to some people there um, so it's a very bizarre, specific development process around this kind of Salvation Army and parking lot that we're going to use the full height of the Fringe Arts Theater because it's incredibly tall and the audience rank is incredibly steep. And so it creates a great advantage to put scenes right in the middle, floating in the space. Um, and because Mario's a DJ, we're going to kind of give the whole thing a 1980s rock and roll disco feel.